Hello, Isam, how are you? Hello, teacher, I am fine, thank you. How about you? Good, how was your day today? My day was busy. I, this is the first class with you today. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Let's see. Um, so, uh, uh, what about, uh, will your weekend be busy also, or what will your weekend be like? My weekend, uh, you can say, I sit, uh, I s uh, stay in home. Mm -hmm. uh, one moment, I close the other video. Okay. Oh yeah. I stay at home and uh, I think I take two classes. Colingo. After that, I went to the beach. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. The beach, huh? Yes, yeah, there is only beach uh, at summer, and when we have winter, we cannot mm. go to the beach, only home, you know. Yeah. Because it is very cold. Yeah. And what do you like to do at the beach? Do you like to swim, or do you... Um, the most things yeah, I like to swim, and the same time I like the walk in the beach. Walk, walk on the beach yeah. Yes, I I like a lot of things to do in the beach. It, it is when the weather is great, you know. Yeah. You like to do anything. Mhm. Mm I hear that. Um. So. Hello, Christoph. Hello again. Welcome back. Welcome back. Yes. Um, I was just talking to Isam, catching up with him. He said he's had a busy day, and he actually has something maybe interesting going on this weekend. He might be going to the beach. So that'll be nice. I guess it depends on uh, on the weather. Um, which class is this? We're going to talk about a um, famous American writer today. Uh, and, uh, and look at some photographs from him in his later years when he lived in Cuba. His name is Ernest Hemingway. And he wrote some of the great American novels, as they call them, great American novels. So we'll learn more about him. Um, are you guys readers? Do you guys like to read? Mm, I used to write. Mm -hmm. Not, but then the internet could take over. <laughs> um, I like to read. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what, um, what do you like? I like to read easy stories. Mm -hmm. I, I like something I can to read it. Mm -hmm. I don't like something difficult, you know, hard to understand like this. Yeah. I see. But like, so, but fiction though, like stories? Yes, stories mm -hmm. or uh, article uh, or something, uh, book, uh, small book, you have a story about a uh, history, mm -hmm. but it will be easy to understand it mm -hmm. like this. And uh, do you read, what language do you normally read in? I can read Greek and I can read uh, Arabic mm -hmm. but my native language is Arabic I can sp I can read uh, fluently but in Greece I so so not very good mm -hmm. yeah that's right so the three languages that you are that you speak all have different writing systems I can speak Greek fluently, but I can't read fluently. I think I can read uh, English better than in, in Greek. 
Oh, really? Yes. So you've lived in Greece for so long. I have 13 years, 14 years. I go to 14 years. Mm -hmm. But why do you think you can read English better? Because when I go to read Greece, Greek, uh, I I am very slow, mm -hmm. and in English I can understand better than Greek, and I can uh, read more quickly. Really? Are yeah, more fast. But you've been studying Greek longer, haven't you? Or did you study English for a while? No, I'm never studying Greek. I learned the Greek to to read Greek by myself. <coughs> in home. Oh yeah, I see. In the street, when I saw some something uh, to read, I'm reading like this. Mm. Interesting. So uh, that's all we have today. Just just the three of us. All right. I guess it's just the three of us. I was thinking we'd have some more people, but maybe. Uh, Literature is not that interesting. <coughs> I was expecting Wafa to come. Um, we're going to talk about regular verbs today. And uh, those can be fun. Um, um, and I was wondering, um, so Isam, you told me about your day today, you told me about your weekend, but can you tell me what you did yesterday? What did you do yesterday? Yesterday, let me remember what I do. I did yesterday. Uh, I think I went to uh, to work because I don't have work right now. Mm -hmm. um, I get up uh, eleven o'clock. I take two classes. I think. One or two, like I don't remember. After that, I went uh, out to walk. Mm -hmm. I back to home about five or six or six o'clock. I ate my dinner mm -hmm. and I feel bored. I went out uh, again mm -hmm. and I back twelve. Uh, yes, 12 midnight, mm -hmm. and I I think I take two, two classes mm -hmm. at 12 o'clock. Yes. So um, so you uh, usually wake up early and take a couple classes before work. When I have work, I'm I get up about uh, seven o'clock morning. Mm -hmm. But when I don't have work, I can't sleep. Mm, I can't sleep uh, early. Mm. By the way, when you're uh, speaking, uh, when you're talking about your day yesterday, that was, those are good sentences. But um, you need to use um, uh, phrasal verbs when you say um, when you come uh, using the word back. I came back home. I came back mm -hmm. home. Uh, you can't say I back home. You have to say I came back home. I have to say I don't know. I came back home. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, I came back home. I came back home. And uh, by the way, um, came, come, came. That's a regular verb. You said ate dinner. That's a regular verb. Mm, yeah, uh, yeah. You got a regular, irregular verbs. There. There's um, yeah. Uh, just, just a couple other ones I can't remember. <coughs> You used a lot of irregular verbs then. Because irregular verbs are more common with using than regular. Yeah, that's true. You have more regular verbs, but... Uh, but they're not as common. As common, yeah, so you don't use them as uh, usual as uh, use the mm -hmm. uh, irregular. Mm -hmm. Yep, and went. To, I went back home. Went to school. Um, and the other reason he used to make is because I asked him a question, which was, "What did you do yesterday?" Which is all past tense. So there's a better chance he's going to say some irregular verbs. What about you, Krzysztof? What, what did you do yesterday? Mm. <laughs> so 
still uh, irregular verb. I woke up. <laughs> I ate uh, breakfast. <laughs> mm. I went uh, uh, to my parents uh, uh, to bus station. Mm -hmm. I brought them back to home. <laughs> Back home. Back home. Uh, sorry, uh, get up is correct or wake up? Uh, I woke up. You can say uh, in, if uh, wake up is uh, present, uh, woke up in past. Mm, because I think I said before get up, uh, teachers uh, told me that I have to I have to say get up. You can I just get up. You can say both. You, okay, just for waking up, you can say I, I woke up yesterday, or you can say I got up. You say, I, I got, got up. up. I got up at seven. I woke up at seven. Basically the same thing. They're both. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank That's you. Right. you yeah. mm -hmm. That's right. You picked up your parents. Did they have a good uh, trip then, uh, Krishna? Yes. They had a good weather. Mm -hmm. Good. That's and good. they uh, brought uh, the to <laughs> Silesia. <laughs> so now we have uh, good weather too. <laughs> ah, good. They brought the good weather to you. Good. Awesome. So still irregular verbs. <laughs> Yes, lots and lots of them like irregular verbs. Um, what about if I talk a little bit about the O vowel in English? Um, we talk, you know, we've read through these irregular verbs things a lot before. We've done this before many times. Um, and one of the um, one of the things that we do when we make something uh, past tense, when it's irregular, is change it for, uh, to an ought sound, like I f to forget becomes forgot. And um, but I wanted to look at that a little bit closer. I just asked about n I know new. I wore. I wondered what can be no past no. New. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. As another irregular verb. Like this? New. It's correct? I type it. Correct. That's correct. Okay. Um. I just came up with a great sentence, uh, which includes the ought sound and it includes the regular verbs, and it's a very short sentence. Uh, so, <laughs> um, this is actually kind of a tricky uh, sentence to say in English. Um, Isam, will you uh, take your time and look at this and try to read that sentence for me? I thought, I thought the lesson, but I forgot. Okay, so uh, make sure we, this is a, a, a th sound and this is a, a t sound. Yes, I, I see that. Yeah, so try, uh, actually before we try it again, I was going to say um, these vowels here, let's see. <coughs> um, actually, actually let me try something. Okay, so everything I just put in bold is those are all different spellings of the same exact sound in English. Okay, so all of these vowels sound like ah, I thought, I taught, but I forgot. Uh, I thought I taught the lesson, but I forgot. So it has a real ah sound. So try that one more time and using that really tall ah vowel. Mm -hmm. 
I thought I uh, I thought I taught the lesson, but I forgot. Okay, feels better. God, taught. yeah. So in English, a lot of times we say that the the O becomes the A sounds very tall. Thought, taught, forgot. Very American English. If you're learning American English, which is what I'm teaching, so. Yeah. Yes, I am learning American um, English. Okay, good. <laughs> uh, let me try another one. <laughs> I don't know what that means, but anyway, the the O's in there. So, Christoph, you read that. <laughs> uh, he forgot to get the pot of curry, but got the kielbasa instead. <laughs> what means kielbasa? That's a strange sentence. It's sausage. Oh, sausage. Yes. It's a Polish sausage. I talk about kielbasa yes. and Christoph. <laughs> kielbasa is in Poland. Uh, yes, kielbasa oh. is uh, kielbasa is in Poland. But uh, I heard mm -hmm. that they use this word in USA as uh, kielbasa. Some yeah. likes uh, English word, I guess. Specific. In Greek is sauce. Yeah, yeah, we use it. Absolutely. Yes, sauce, only sauce. Sausage. Um, so kielbasa is a kind of sausage. And the wurst. Sausage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and wurst. And uh, uh, so in in uh, in the United States, a kielbasa is a specific type of sausage. Polish sausage, sometimes called. Let's see if I can find a picture of it. Oh, not YouTube. I might do. And you can find uh, in ingredients uh, some dishes have uh, instead they don't write uh, kielbasa. Uh, they don't write uh, uh, sausage, but they write uh, kielbasa. Right. Yeah. And kielbasa just means we call it Polish sausage. Sometimes it's a specific kind. It looks just like this. That's kielbasa. Yes. Yes. Yeah. It's tasty. Uh, because uh, it's uh, mm, so this sausage you call the uh, uh, with steam if you do uh, this sausage too. Uh, you know this uh, too hot dog if you put uh, this uh, very long uh, thing. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, they are, I don't know, not as dense as uh, kielbasa. The how <laughs> we have different. Uh, we have a name for this parufka. <laughs> it's uh, uh, kielbasa is uh, made on steam. <laughs> I will. I show. So I show you a picture, maybe. Can you see that? Yes. Oh. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. And I because we have different name for this, but English is still sausage. Oh. Yes. Yeah, well, well, actually, it kind of looks like um, looks like a hot dog. A frankfurter. 
Frankfurter. Oh, you can say Frankfurter. Well, we don't say Frankfurter very much. But we usually say hot dog. It looks like a hot dog to me. Okay, so this is a hot dog, yes. But uh, we have uh, we we have name of uh, how they made this. So they use a steam to. Uh, yeah. So its name is like the steam something. <laughs> uh, uh -huh. In Polish, it says para and steam is the same. So is. Uh, uh, this word is uh, going from uh, steam, uh, like steamer, or how <laughs> yeah, yeah. make some word. Yeah, 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 yeah. Interesting. Steamer. <laughs> <laughs> I made another word. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how we make. That's how we. That's how we make up words too. I mean, when we call, we have to name something. Sometimes we use the process. We. Uh, we use the process of how it was made into the name. We use it all the time. Um, like pancake. Yes. Think about that, pancake. Is this how we make it, right? No, yes. no. It's all the time. They do it all the time. So, because we have uh, the own name for this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Um, well, why don't we uh, listen? Uh, and make me crazy if I want to speak about glass. <laughs> glass? In, in English, because we have different uh, names for gl uh, some glass. Like uh, you, you have glasses on your nose, yes? <laughs> and you have glass in your window, and you drink from glass. Oh, they're all the same, yeah. Um, but we have different name for this. Uh, but uh, uh, you have a little too because uh, you ha can say glasses or spectacles. But we don't really say spectacles. Uh, yes. we say you can cross that one off your list. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it, uh, but exist. <laughs> it exists. I know exactly. Everybody knows what that means. Yeah. But it's not. Uh, uh, and uh, glasses, you have a uh, tumbler. But. Uh, a kind of glass. Uh, yes, kind of glass to drink uh, alcohol. <laughs> yeah, it's a, yeah, it's usually a, sh a stout glass. Yes. Kind of like this. But we have a uh, name for this uh, glass. <laughs> yeah, and tumbler is about you tumble like rocks and like tumble. Ice yes. uh, with uh, you can uh, uh, drink vodka with uh, uh, ice. Uh, with, in this tumbler, <laughs> uh, but uh, a measure for I have seen that measure for flour. If you add uh, some ingredients to uh, some recipe, you have. Um, uh, to add flour, tumbler of flour uh, to this uh, dish. A tumbler of flour? Yes, uh, you know, uh, if you prepare some dish, if you make a dinner, mm -hmm. so uh, you add a tumbler uh, of uh, Flour to bowl. Oh, yeah, we would say like a cup of flour. Like we, I've never heard of adding a tumbler. Like I have use... seen uh, on the list ingredients and uh, like really? uh, uh, like stick of butter, something yeah, like yeah. this, and uh, then tumbler of uh, flour. I've never seen that in my life. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Huh. Um, so um, uh, let's talk about um, so let's talk about regular verbs for a second here before we before we look at uh, Ernest Hemingway. Um, unless uh, Isam, unless you had anything you wanted to to chat about before we looked at this grammar stuff. No, I don't think so. <laughs> Any comments on our 
conversation about English language. Um, okay. If you want to ask me, I will answer <laughs> only that. That's it, no problem. Well, then, I will ask you, Isam, to read what's on the screen. <coughs> okay. First, you will n notice uh, that many past mm, tense, past tense, verb in English and uh, in AD, these are regular verb. Look at uh, listened, lis listened, walked, talked. However, the verb we use it most for fre frequently are uh, irregular. Was a uh, thought talk. Good. Great. Um, Crystal? Second, there is one type of irregular verb ends in the out. Sounds uh, in the past tense. Uh, buy, bought, teach, taught, think, thought, catch, caught, uh, uh, fight, fought. Yeah, that's that ought sound that we were talking about, that ah uh, sound that we were talking about before today. Uh, and as you see, this. We're very hmm, creative in our spelling. We can spell it any way we want. <laughs> uh, Isam. I was mute. Right. Uh, last vowel, get, got, forget, forgot, thinks, thank, uh, think, thank, give, gav, uh, no, new. All right. Oh, we got some more for you. <laughs> oh. Uh, fail, fail, hold, held, sit, sit, through, through, run, run, right, route, drive, drove. Good. Uh, exactly. Okay, and fourth. Okay. Fourth, uh, few of the most common irregular verbs change a lot. They are the most common verbs in English and the most irregular. <laughs> um, are, as, was, were, it, ate, go, went, see, saw, uh, take, took. Mm -hmm. Yes, as, as you were saying before. Many of the most, even though, yeah, even though most are regular, the most common ones are irregular. Isn't, isn't English fun? I think uh, because of the, they are most used, <laughs> they make them irregular. Why? What do you mean by that? Because of this. <laughs> <laughs> I've noticed that in other languages though too is that irregular verbs in other languages tend to be the most common one yes. I don't know if that's always true but I think I've noticed that before it's strange so maybe because they're used so much that they evolve faster or I don't know I don't, it confuses me um, so Maybe they want to make them more distinguished. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. Um, let, maybe so. So let's look at this uh, article. You guys heard about uh, Ernest Hemingway? Yes. Yeah, he's a pretty famous guy. Well, I uh, read The uh, Old Man and Sea. Oh, you've read Ernest Hemingway, okay. I never heard about this. Okay, you what? I never heard. Never heard about it. Okay. All right, well, that's fine. We're going to learn learn all about him right now. Uh, okay. Hemingway in Cuba, 1952. Portraits of a legend. We'll look at the photos later. Time, or excuse me, Life magazine. It's famous for fantastic photography. 
Uh, I will send this to you guys too. I'll make it a little bigger for you. Uh, that Ernest, Ernest Hemingway was for years the most celebrated writer in America is hardly surprising. After all, if he had written nothing besides, say, The Sun Also Rises, the early collection in our time, and the magisterial short happy life of Francis Maycomer, he would still be an utterly indispensable American writer. The preposterous and romantic literary myth that Hemingway himself created and nurtured uh, meanwhile, that of the brawling, hard-drinking, thrill-seeking uh, sportsman who is also an uncompromising, soulful artist, ensured that generations of writers would not merely revere him, but often to their own abiding de detriment, uh, would also try to emulate him. Okay, so we see that this is not, not written in beginner English. <laughs> There's some pretty difficult uh, language here. Um, what about, we talk about revere him and emulate him. What do these verbs mean, to revere and to emulate? Mm, to assess little? Not really, not really. Um, to emulate, which one are you talking about, Re emulate? Oh, no, to revere. Or to revere. Um, to revere is kind of like to worship, I think. Like, um, it's like to, to show devotion or to, uh, to, be, to have a lot of respect for somebody, then you revere him. You, uh, mm. Yeah, to, to honor, to regard as very worthy. Where is the second one, teacher? So emulate is yeah. to... Uh, pretend. Someone pretend. pretends to be him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You can imitate someone. Um, to emulate someone. Mimic. You mimic. Yeah, that's a good word, to mimic someone. So basically, but you can also use it in a positive way. So like if you're talking about the arts, this is an art and literature class. So if somebody has emulated someone else, a lot of times it means that they have used the style of another artist. And that's what they're talking about here is that some writers are were writing just like Ernest Hemingway because they were so influenced by him. So they tried to emulate him. Good word. I don't know. It's right. easy for me because you can emulate another system on or second system. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so it's from computer area. There you go. Em helps. You have emulator. Of course, emulator. That's true. Yes. Um, so let's look at, let's keep going then. And yet, most readers, when pressed, might well name a slew of other authors, living and dead, like Faulkner, Bellow, Cormac McCarthy, who, across the years, crafted more varied and more consistently excellent work than Hemingway's. So, despite what countless acolytes might claim, Hemingway was not the greatest American of, uh, writer of the 20th century. He was, however, and more than five decades after his death, he remains the single most influential, most parodied, most prominent, most immense American author of the past 100 years. Incredibly, one of, the, one of Hemingway's most highly regarded novels, the short masterpiece, The Old Man and the Sea, which Christoph read, was first published in its entirety in a single issue of this magazine, of Life magazine, uh, in September of 1952. That's exactly... 61 years ago. Um, at the time, Hemingway was to employ the apt metaphor for a man who fairly worshipped machismo, the heavyweight champ of American letters. Uh, even if his productivity had waned, and even if the searing brilliance that defined seemingly every story and novel of his early years had, by 1952, been reduced to an occasional flare of the old genius, 
Papa was still a cultural force to be reckoned with. Yeah, this is written in a very, very difficult manner because they use lots of commas. <laughs> it's like really hard to read this. So, um, I'm not going to read the parenthetical bit yet. Warranted or not, the hubbub that attended Hemingway turned any new story or, better yet, new book into a publishing event. The life issue, to absolutely no one's surprise, was an enormous success selling millions of newsstand copies in a matter of days. The novel itself earned Hemingway his first and only Pulitzer Prize for fiction uh, and remains among his most widely read works. And yet, as anyone who had indulged an even casual interest in his career knows, by the early 1950s, Hemingway, that should be apostrophe S, <laughs> Hemingway's private world was one increasingly defined not by protean artistic achievements, but by rivers of booze, bewilderment, and his own diminishing powers as a writer, depression, and even rage at his failing, once indomitable health, in short, by a host of personal relentless demons. Okay, what the hell? That's one sentence. That is a really long sentence. This is written very difficult. This is written difficultly. It's hard to read. The larger-than-life figure who prized grace under pressure above all that uh, all other attributes was besieged in less than a decade. His demons would drive him to suicide by shotgun. All of this helps explain why, when life's Alfred uh, Eisenstadt went to Cuba to photograph Hemingway for a September 1952 issue, he encountered not a gracious if perhaps prickly fellow artist and man of letters, but a thoroughly disagreeable, paranoid, gin-sodden lunatic. Eisenstadt was, state, was able eventually to capture a few un, uh, usable images of the middle-aged man who is soon be awarded the Nobel Prize for Literature. His cover photo of, of Hemingway, in fact, a something of a classic, a riveting portrait of a no longer young, still formidable lion. Um, we're not going to read any more of that because it's just too difficult for you guys and it's really long and it's mostly about taking his pictures of his last um, but let's look at some of these pictures they're talking about so there he is drunk on gin I guess <laughs> Cuba oh wait is there captions on it? Not published in life. That's a good picture. So there's captions. I missed the captions. All right, I was there. I think I, I've been to this house before. It's uh, You can't go inside it, but you can tour it, and you can tour around the house. Kojimar, or Kojimar, a Cuban fishing village, and the inspiration for the village in Hemingway's novel, The Old Man in the Sea. So, that's a little bit about Hemingway. Do you guys have any uh, questions about about this stuff? No. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, Let's see. You guys remember where Hemingway was born? I don't think I said that in the movie. You can actually just tell me the country. It's fine. In Idaho. Uh, I think he 
died in Idaho. Yeah. Yeah. So he he was born in a different state, but uh, he was he died in Idaho. But he was born somewhere else actually. He was something he was, old. Uh, Illinois. I think he was born in Illinois. Uh, Oak Park, Illinois. Oh, yeah. Oak. <laughs> Oak Park. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yes. Um, so, um, yeah. So, what about Old Man in the Sea? Is that, did you like that book, Christoph? Mm, yes. <laughs> you read a translation, right? Yes, I read that in Polish. Mm -hmm. I'm sure that. Oh, uh, very, very long time ago. Oh, okay. Yeah. And maybe did you have to read it for school? No, mm, for fun. Mm, okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, Isam. Yes. What was uh, something that you read recently that you enjoyed? Uh, I read uh, the book uh, it's story about the dead man is not uh, I think it's a uh, imagine story like mm -hmm. f uh, give f from fun size uh, imagine you know imagine like fantasy yes fantasy mm -hmm. It is the uh, the dead man. I read it. It is in English. Mm -hmm. I read it a lot of time. I like it. it. I will send you the the link. You can enjoy it with this video. It is uh, for the, I will send it to to Christoph. It is about the forty uh, fourteen second. Mm -hmm. And I like to read it, read it. One moment, I will give you. Okay. Okay, I found it. Ah, uh, okay. Oh, so it's a video. And it's then, a video yeah. about this. Uh huh. Uh, John Escott. I don't know if I've heard that before. Did you hear about that? Uh, I don't know if I heard about that book. But you said it's pretty good. The story I like this. I like the story, and I translate every word. I don't understand it. I. Mm -hmm. uh, repeat it, repeat it, it mm -hmm. about ten times or for fifteen times. Not because it like I like it very much. Because I want to, um, I wanted to improve my English, mm -hmm. and I wrote it in the in my uh, netbook uh, all the story. One hour. Oh, okay. It take about one week to type it. Really? Yes. Oh. Uh, do you, are you a fast reader, Isam? No. Uh, I'm good. Not the fast and not slow. Okay, man. I'm a slow reader. <laughs> Just one reason I, I don't. I'm the same. You the same. Which is one reason I don't. I'm not good at reading books. I I, uh, I read so slowly that it's uh, hard to keep up. <laughs> mm -hmm. mind. Your line is good. Is uh... hmm? Your line is good. My line. Line. Oh, I don't know what what how can I say it in English. When you're typing. Uh, it is uh, your line or your my, way, your way to read. Uh, how to can my writing? Yes. Like when I my writing, my writing. Yes. 
fine. My writing is great. My reading is good too. I just read slowly. <clears throat> I mean, I can read fine, I, but I just read very uh, slowly, maybe compared to other people. My writing is good too. I, I'm a good writer. Not a problem for me. Um, so we talked about lots of fun things today. We talked about the letter O. And uh, and what did we what did I say about the letter O earlier? About, we were talking about pronunciation in um, uh, irregular verbs. What were we talking about? That mm, the little like ah. Uh. Yeah, it's a lot like ah. Uh. <laughs> so what are some examples of that? Like like get. Yes. Uh huh. Or thought. Yeah, yeah. Get, got, think, thought. These are these uh, these O vowels that, but they're not pronounced O. They're pronounced A. Right? Si so can be. Si so no. No, no actually. No, because it's uh, W. No, but that's okay. Remember, uh, the spelling is different. English spelling is ha has. We have terrible, we don't have really rules for mm -hmm. spelling. So, so that's actually true. Saw, you're right, actually. Saw rhymes with got and thought, saw. Um, I saw, I forgot. Saw is a little more aw ah than forgot, is a little more aw. Ah. It's a little different, but it's very, very close, actually. Yeah. Um, Um, and then what else do we talk about today? Irregular verbs in general. <laughs> yes. Um, and Hemingway. <laughs> Hemingway. How can we tie all this together? Well, that's Hemingway. It was lived in the past. So uh, I guess you kind of have to use past tense. So there's a good chance when we talk about Hemingway, we can use uh, regular verbs. Um, so, um, speaking about Hemingway, what did they say about his drinking? He's typical in a lot of American writers, uh, in English writers, actually, about his drinking. What can you remember about his drinking? He drank a lot. <laughs> he drank a lot. Ah, get a regular verb. He loved to drink. He drank a lot. Yes, he was very famous for that. Um, if you go to Key West, Florida, or to uh, Havana in Cuba, uh, some other places, like places that he used to hang out, you'll find uh, all the bars that he used to hang out are like museums now. You can go to these bars and get a drink, but it'll be like, the Hemingway bar, and everything will be Ernest Hemingway everywhere. And they'll even tell you what his favorite drinks were. Um, I don't know anything about him. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I have no idea anything about. Uh, ah, you have. I have to read in the article if I saw anything to drink. Yeah, it, the drinking thing was in the article. Ah, yeah. uh, it was in article. Yeah, they talked about. They talked mm -hmm. a little bit. About um, he was drinking coffee. <laughs> no, well, he drank coffee, but he also drank a lot of uh, alcohol. Big drinker. Uh, whiskey. Whiskey. Yeah, probably whiskey, gin. I think he drank a lot of gin. Wine. Maybe. Maybe. Beer. Probably. Maybe. Um. So, what else can we say about Hemingway? Maybe we could do a little. Um, maybe we could do a little game where we uh, uh, past tense game, where I uh, this, this game where I give you guys a word and you make it past tense. Give you a verb and you make it past tense. Mm -hmm. Okay, so. Um, 
So uh, like Christoph already said, drink, drink, drink. So what about um, to eat, Isam? Eight. Right, eight. Um, what about to teach, Christoph? Me? Oh, Christoph. Yeah. Okay. Uh, to talk. Say that again. Talk. Yes. You can't say to talk. No. Um, and uh, Isam, what about um, buy, if you buy something? But. Right. It rhymes with talk. <laughs> and um, um, what about sell? When we talk about buying, what about selling, Christoph? Uh, sold. Yes. Yes. That's another one. Oh. Isam, how about talk? Told? Yes, it's talked. <laughs> it's a regular verb. That's not a regular. It's regular. Just trying to trick you. <laughs> um, good. So maybe I will... Um, one last thing here. I'll just give you guys one more verb, and then you can just make a, make a whole sentence with it, any sentence you want. So, um, um, Krzysztof, how about um, run? What can we do it? What can we do? No? Oh, I was going to have Christoph make a sentence using run. Mm -hmm. run. Okay. Mm -hmm. I run. I ran away uh, yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I ran away yesterday. Good. And finally, Isam, uh, make a sentence for me using the word give. Uh, in past tense, of course. Yes. Uh, uh, I, I give you something strange. Uh, or so doesn't have to be strange. <laughs> I give, I give, I've, I give you something, uh, some gift. Oh, 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 I give, you, yeah, I gave you some gifts. I give you some gifts. Say it one more time. I give you some gifts. In past, past tense. I give. Yeah. I give. Give is a uh, irregular verb. So the past tense of give, is Christoph, you know. Is gave. 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 Yeah. So give, gave. I gave you. I gave you something. Give. Some give. Good. Good. I gave you some gifts. Thank you for giving me some gifts. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> give, gave. Think, thought. Teach, taught. Ah, don't you love irregular verbs? All right. That is the end of our class. I do have uh, a, another class right now. Um, it's gonna be fun. Talk about movies, I believe. So um, check yeah, it out. the golden age. The golden age of film. So we'll see what it's all about. If you guys like old movies, old American movies, I guess. Uh, which one? I guess you'll have to come to the class to find out. <laughs> <laughs> it's a whole era. It's like decades of movies, like. There's tons of movies that came out. Which decade? <laughs> yeah. Oh, 30s, 40s, 50s. You know, a long time ago. Hollywood. Hollywood. So black and white? <laughs> mostly. Mostly black and white. Yeah. Definitely. Mostly black and white. Good stuff. Paul Negri. <laughs> what? Like Paul Negri. <laughs> Paul Negri. Who? I don't even know that. You don't know Paul Negri? Maybe not. Maybe you'll have to teach me. In my next <laughs> so I'll see you guys there. Um, thanks a lot. Good job, and uh, take care. Thank see you. you. See you. Thank you.